Chuck, let's talk about fish eyes. Okay. <laughs> I hear they're a delicacy in some parts. Uh, actually, Charles Liu. Yeah. Okay. I've had many a Chinese New Year dinner with him. Yes. And and red is an important luck yeah, color big, big, in China. Color for luck. And red snapper is always served. Okay. And he, in front of all the kids, and all, ever since my kids grew up, there's the ritual of him sticking his finger in the eye socket, pulling out the eye, and eating it. Interesting. This is our Charles Liu. I, you know, you always knew something was wrong with that child. I was going to say you have <laughs> you have really changed the way I think about Charles Liu. <laughs> Charles Liu, the Hannibal Lecter of <laughs> astrophysics. <laughs> Our geek in chief is an eyeball eater. That's well. Wow. Okay, so let me remind you just how sight works, or how the optics of sight works. Okay, so light comes through the air, and air has a certain density to it. That makes okay? sense. And it goes through the pupil of your eye. And on the other side of the pupil is the lens. It goes through the lens, mm -hmm. and the lens bends the light. Of course. Okay? And then brings it to focus to an on image the, on the back of, back of your eyeball. Right. On the retina. And then you're, and it's, ups, it's an upside, upside down, down image. Yeah, so your brain inverts it and does what it needs to do. Cameras used to do that. The single lens reflex cameras, why you're not looking directly through, it comes up and across. In that bend, it makes the image right side up. Same with binoculars. Right. You ever see binoculars where it's narrow up front and then it goes wider there? That bend rectifies the image. You think, oh, it's just the design? No, it is so that you don't see everything upside down the way the lens does. So the light comes through and it focuses. Your lens is focusing the light that came through the air. And anytime light changes from one medium to another, it bends, like in water. Yeah. Like you see, you know, the famous one is with a straw. So if you like to fish, but don't like waiting around with a with a rod, with and a rod reel. and and a and a and a, and a right. wire, uh, you might do it with a bow and arrow. Right. Okay. The bow fish. So you just see the t and then you shoot. Right. Spear fishermen do the same thing. I from, guess so. From, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So they know whether or not they've studied the optics of it. They know that if you aim where you see the fish, you'll miss the fish. You're not going to get it. Right. Right. Because the light bent on its way out. Right. So they have to aim below where they see the fish, because that's where the fish actually is. Right. All right. Okay. All right, so here's the thing. What they never do accurate, hardly ever do accurately in movies is mm -hmm. they'll show a point of view of someone underwater and everything is in perfect focus. Has that ever happened to you? No. No, not ever. No. Everything is blurry. Super blurry. Blurry. Right. Because the light is no longer coming from air, it's coming from water. Interesting, that's right. And the difference in density, because density is what does this, between the water and your eyeball mm -hmm. is not as high as the difference in density between the air and your eyeball. Okay. And the bigger the difference in density, the more the light is gonna bend. Right. So we're getting some free bend out of the light because it's coming out of the air into our eyes. Right. Getting some free bend. You go underwater, the light is not bending, it does not focus on your retina. Look at that. Okay, so. Oh, you're automatically nearsighted when you go is underwater. Is that right? I, is it in your If it falls fine. short, then you're, you're nearsighted. If okay, it falls no, this beyond, one, it goes beyond. If it goes it beyond, then you're farsighted. Farsighted. Right. You are farsighted underwater, okay. okay? Like for everything, even stuff that's far. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, generally, you can't see that far underwater, so it's, yeah. a, it's a moot point. So, Chuck, if you want to see underwater, either you put on goggles, Right. So that the light comes through the goggle, and now it comes through air right. before it hits your eye. Right. So that's why goggles makes everything clear, if you've ever been underwater. Oh, yeah. That's God, why that's, goggles work. I only use goggles that, that, for that reason. For that reason. Okay. Right. Otherwise, you can't see anything. All right. Or give yourself a really fat eyeball lens, chunky fat, to compensate for the fact that the light is coming from water into your eye, because it's not bending so much. So a fatter lens will bend it better. Can't just open your eyes real wide. It doesn't underwater. work. Exactly. So give yourself really fat, fat lenses. Fat lens eyeballs, then you can focus. Guess who has really fat lens eyeballs? Don't say fish. Fish. <laughs> fish. Fish have really fat lensed eyeballs. So they're not seeing what we see. No, at all. they see. They know what's going on down there. Oh man, they are they don't, seeing in they, clarity. They don't need goggles. Look at that. They don't need goggles because they got big old fish eyeballs. And in photography, there's a lens 
that is um, a very low millimeter lens, very wide field of view. It's called, it's called a fisheye fish lens because it's big and fat. Right. It looks like a big old bug guy fish eyeball. Anybody who knows anything about 90s videos knows about fisheye lenses. What? Because all the 90s videos, they use fisheye lenses. You really? know? Yeah, for some reason, it became a super okay. popular thing. You know, right. It was in style. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, everybody was up in the, you know, <laughs> and it made some reason. Oh, to get up in the lens. Yeah, they get up in yeah, the yeah, lens yeah, and yeah, it yeah. would distort you. And yeah, yeah. Everybody thought that was so cool. <laughs> yeah. So fish eyeballs, that's why fisheye is a thing. To reference, give me the fattest lens to make up for the fact that when you're crossing those medium, it needs help. Don't have that fat lens around Charles <laughs> Luke. <laughs> he might eat the lens. He will eat your eyeball. <laughs> you say, come here, you got something in your <laughs> eye. <laughs> You've got your eye. In <laughs> you got your eye. Because the way he did it, too, he takes his finger, goes in the socket, and yeah. like scoops it out. Yeah. Mm. We all have kids at the table. All the kids right. just, hey. I, I was feeling that way too. You're lucky to get me to eat just the fish itself, <laughs> let alone fish eye. That's you know. So by the way, this bending of the light as right. it goes from one medium to the next, uh, it also happens from space to, to Earth's Earth. atmosphere. Right. Okay. The light bends. So sunlight comes through the vacuum of space, hits Earth's atmosphere, and bends. And that's why when you see the sun set, it actually set five minutes ago. And when you see the sun rise. It actually hasn't risen yet, and it's not going to rise for another five minutes. So you're seeing the light as it was bent by the atmosphere. Exactly. To show you what you're not actually seeing. Correct. And it bent over the horizon to then hand you the sun before it actually had gotten there. And on the equinoxes, March 21st, September 21st, with people, I was nerdy enough to say, well, if it's equal day and night, let me look at the sunrise and sunset times mm. and see if it splits the day evenly. I did this when I was in middle school, and it didn't split evenly. And I was pissed off. I said, then why are you calling it equinox? Which <laughs> means equinite. I would later learn, as I learned more astronomy and more of the night sky, that sunrise and sunset, it's coming through the atmosphere. The 12 hours of day and night is if there was no atmosphere, and then the sun would exactly be on the horizon. Right. But they're sneaking in a few extra minutes because of this on each side. So... This is, again, more of just light bending, depending on what the medium is that it goes through. And the densest transparent substance known is what? The densest transparent substance. Oh, I, I don't know if I know the densest. Take a wild guess. I'll say glass. No. You can do better than glass. Mm. Transparent. And, uh... Did you give your wife a glass ring for when you? Oh, that's right. <laughs> Let's keep that between us. Let's not get all crazy. <laughs> Letting the secrets out now. Yeah. Uh, the dense is transparent, so uh, the diamond. The diamond. The right. diamond. So it's dense. Light going into the diamond bends the most. It bends so much that you hit a critical angle where it gets internally reflected, and it stays inside the diamond. It comes out in some other direction. So that's why diamonds have this glisteny thing, because the light can come from over here, and end up going in the direction of your eyes, but it looks like you don't know where it's coming from. Right. That's what, that's why diamonds they sparkle the they way sparkle, they do. They sparkle the way they do because of the high angle bend that's inside of it. So it's optics. It's just optics. Fun optics. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. All right. We gotta get out of here. Always Thanks for being there for these explainers. I love Otherwise, it. Otherwise, I'll be talking in the in the vacuum of space. Listen, people are are out there. It's weird because we're talking to each other. It's true. You're eavesdropping on our conversation. Exactly. But I I, I hope you don't mind because I'm I feel like I'm Chuck's tutor. You know. And oh no, we, that's the truth. Listen, I'm all about that. We're done here. Neil deGrasse Tyson for Star Talk. As always, keep looking up.